This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. Three policemen assigned to the Calamba City, Laguna police officer under investigation for their alleged involvement in the kidnapping of a 54-year-old man in Los Banos, Laguna on the 26th of March. The Police Regional Office 4A led by Police Brig General Paul Kenneth Lucas ordered on Tuesday, the 9th of April, a comprehensive investigation on the incident. The Los Banos Police Station said Erwin Espanola Magbanua reported that his youngest brother, Randy Magbanua, from Barangay Lalake, Los Banos, has been missing since the 26th of March. Randy was last seen on the National Road in Barangay Lalake. Police conducted an investigation and backtracking of surveillance footage on the national highway and adjacent areas. They found out that Randy was abducted by eight individuals on board a black Toyota Wigo and motorcycle. The suspects fled towards Calamba City. Follow-up investigation resulted in a witness identifying two persons of interest, Burda and Narido. Six other POs are under investigation for possible proof of identity. The Laguna Police Provincial Office found out that three POs were police officers based on witness and surveillance footage in area. They were assigned to the Calamba City Police Station and immediately relieved from their posts and placed under the Provincial Headquarters Administrative Holding Centre pending investigation. Lucas ordered a deeper probe into the roles and actions of the three lawmen. We are committed to leaving no stone unturned in the pursuit of truth and justice for the families of the missing persons. Every effort is being made to ascertain the whereabouts and ensure the safety of the missing individual, and those responsible for any wrongdoing will be brought to justice, Lucas said. Police are also determining if the three police officers are linked to another missing persons incident in Calamba City. The Commission on Audit has flagged the officials of Ramos Town in Tarlac for lack of responsiveness to the real needs of residents when 90% of the town's farmlands were inundated and one. 126 families were affected by typhoons Ege and Falcon in July and the 20th of August 23. In its 2023 audit report, COA scrutinized the municipality's local disaster risk reduction and management fund utilization. It said its auditors found that the municipality appropriated 5,326,229 pesos as its LDRRM fund for 2023. However, they noticed that the municipality simply adopted the same programs projects, and activities from its 2021 LDRRM plan. For the COA, the findings showed a lack of responsiveness by the management to the real needs of its constituents. COA's audit report showed that 15 out of the 20 PPAs were implemented, while 5 PPAs with a total appropriation of 1,025,654 pesos were still not implemented as of 31 December, 2023. These unimplemented PPAs included the purchase of swab testing kits, purchase of COVID-19 vaccines, purchase of subsidized vegetable seeds, climate and disaster risk assessment training, and titling of acquired lots. The non-implementation of identified PPAs for the cited reasons may be indication that the planned PPAs were again not responsive to the real needs of the constituents, the report also said. At the same time, COA said that the auditors found that the municipality stored 21 caverns of rice as part of its rice subsidy program. Unfortunately, these were already infested with insects and were still in the municipality's stock room, it said. Another concern raised was the incomplete details submitted in the distribution list for various medicines, dengue solution, play seeds, and relief goods. While the municipality was able to provide auditors copies of distribution lists, these were found to be incomplete, COA said. It said, one common observation was that the submitted distribution lists lacked necessary details such as quantity and type of items received. Also, several pages of the list do not bear the signature of the recipients, their respective addresses, and the date of receipt. The report said, these deficiencies precluded the audit team from timely verifying the transactions. COA asked officials of Ramon Town to complete all the necessary details in the supporting distribution list in order to help them conduct its validation, as well as design guidelines on distributing farm inputs to farmers for approval in order to prevent excessive disbursements and other future complaints. Also, it said that concerned town officials should closely monitor perishable goods like rice so as to avoid spoilage. The office of the president placed David L. Norte Governor Edwin Jubahib under preventive suspension for 60 days starting the 11th of April. In an interview Thursday, Abdullah Matalam, 
the Department of the Interior and Local Government and Davao Region Regional Director said Vice Governor de Colo who I will serve as Acting Governor of Davao del Norte for 60 days while Juba Hibi is still suspended. The suspension order came from the office of the President. We followed the order, and we just did our job. It's nothing personal, he said. The order was the result of the November 24, 2022. Affidavit complaint filed by board member Ali Ahmed against Jubahab for grave abuse of authority and oppression and the latter's the 9th of October, 2023. Answer. Ahmed filed the complaint against the governor in connection with last year's barangay elections in the area. After a preliminary evaluation and consideration of the party's allegations and evidence, this office finds strong evidence of guilt against Governor Jubahib. Likewise, given the gravity of the offense charged, there is a great probability that his continuance in office could influence the witnesses or pose a threat to the safety and integrity of the records and other evidence. The 8th of April, 2024 order signed by Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin said, the order was under Section 63 of Republic Act No. 7160, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991 inches, and Section 1, Rule 6 of Administrative Order No. 23, S. 1992. A barangay public safety officer was killed while two others, including a policeman, were wounded when a man went on a stabbing spree in Quezon City on Wednesday. The victim, Vanalita Salazar, 45, of Barangay Payatase, and another Barangay officer, Ronaldo Matea, 51, went to Morning Star Street at around 1.30 p.m. in response to a call about an unruly person in the area. Probers identified the suspect as Wilfredo Belgera, 41, whom Salazar and Matea confronted for his behavior thinking they had pacified Belgera. The watchman turned to leave when the suspect stabbed them. Executive Master Sergeant Roel Relox, a resident of the area, responded to the scene but was stabbed by the suspect in the left arm and stomach. Bystanders ganged up on Belgera and subdued the suspect. Belgera is facing criminal charges of murder and frustrated murder. He is recuperating in another hospital in Quezon City. A policeman who had gone absent without official leave was nabbed for allegedly robbing a fast food restaurant in Carigura. Letter, on Wednesday, the 10th of April, the suspect was identified as Salvador Hambria, 37, formerly assigned to the Letter Police Provincial Office and a resident of Barangay Ponang, Carigura. Police said that the suspect suddenly approached the cashier at gunpoint and declared a holdup. The suspect grabbed cash from the cash register amounting to 2,580 pesos and fled to an unknown direction. Lawmen caught the suspect in a hot pursuit operation on Thursday, the 11th of April, in Barangay Ponang. Suspect face appropriate charges. Two policemen were arrested in Cotabato City on Friday for allegedly extorting money from a motorist in exchange for his impounded vehicle. Master Sergeant Nasrullah Abdullah Ghani and Executive Master Sergeant Benigno Mercado Jr. were apprehended by operatives of the Police Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim and now in Barangay. Rosary Heights 1 at 7.05 p.m. IMEG Director Brigadier General Warren De Leon said police conducted an entrapment in response to a complaint of an engineer. The victim said the policeman and his four cohorts asked for 50,000 pesos in exchange for the release of his vehicle, a green Honda Civic, which was impounded for an unspecified violation. The suspects were held after they accepted 20,000 pesos in marked money from the victim. Two cell phones, a 9mm handgun and a gallo rifle were also seized from the two. Criminal charges have been brought against five Mandawi city officials in connection with the 9.5 hectares of land that reportedly belonged to a private individual but were distributed to the informal settlers. Maria Priscilla Melendez filed the charges against Mayor Jonas Cortez and city councillors Marlene Zafra, Oscar del Castillo, Jen Del Mar, and Cynthia Remedio at the office of Ombudsman Samuel Reyes Martires in Quezon City on 16 March, 2024 for violating Section 3 of Republic Act 3019, also known as the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act, in the case of oppression, gross misconduct in office, and grave abuse of authority Melendez also filed a separate complaint at the office of the president. The plaintiff requested President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. to put those officials involved under preventive suspension, while the case is being heard so that they could not influence the witnesses and threaten those who handle the investigation. The respondents could influence the witnesses or pose a threat to the safety and integrity of the records and other evidence, read part of Melendra's complaint, but according to lawyer Julius Caesar Entice, 
the city's assistant city assessor. The city has the right to own the land because it is classified as timberland, which means that a private individual cannot own it. In spite of that, Melendras, a resident of Barangay Lahug in Cebu City, insisted that they own the lot located in Barangay Paknan, which has been used as a relocation site for informal settlers. Melendras said the land was owned by his grandmother and was sold to her. According to Melendras, more than 100 houses have already been built in the area. She revealed that the tax declaration which she filed was also registered under her name and was recognized by the city government. She added that the city assessor's office also recognized her as the real owner based on the real property tax statement that she filed. Melendras stated that she had further paid 100,291 pesos for the lot's increased assessment price. Additionally, Melendras filed a complaint against Cortez, which is still pending at the municipal trial court in Cities 2 in Mandawi. Melendras believes that the respondents ignored the legal process and proceeded in awarding the lots to the informal settlers even though the ejection case was still pending. Melendras also accused the city of destroying the fence that she installed in the area. A high school teacher was killed in an ambush in Mahayag, Zamboanga del Sur on Thursday. Jaro Matom of Dumangag National High School was driving home on his motorcycle when he was waylaid in Barangay Bonero. According to reports reaching the office of Zamboanga del Sur Police Director Colonel Restituto Pangusban, Itoma suffered multiple gunshot wounds and died at the scene. Probers have yet to determine the motive for the killing. Relatives and co-workers of Itoma said the victim had no known enemies. Contract of service and job order personnel hired by Eastern Samar Province were were not only paid below the daily minimum wage, but worse, their salaries were always delayed in 2023, the Commission on Audit said. In its annual audit report, COA said that when the audit team checked the disbursement vouchers, payrolls, and supporting documents attached to the payments of wages of COS and JO personnel, they discovered delays in the payments of wages. The payments of wages of COS JO personnel were late depriving them of the timely release of their compensation to support their daily needs and expenses. The elapsed time of processing payrolls and e-versus for the payment of COSJO personnel wages for the period January to November 2023, ranged from 6 to 279 days, thus causing delayed payment by one day to 263 days. COA said in its report, it said the province's accounting office explained that the delay was due to late submission of the required supporting documents by the personnel in charge of preparing payrolls, such as contract of service and daily time records. However, this was unacceptable to the audit team. It also said, the foregoing delay in the payment of wages would ultimately cause undue burden and inconvenience to the CSOJO personnel, affecting their focus and performance at work. It pointed out, as if the delays were not bad enough. COA said its audit team even found that wages paid were below the minimum daily rate. For the period of January to the 20th of April 23, around 1,923 COSJO personnel were paid below the minimum daily wage rate of 375 pesos. All the personnel, ranging from those working for the provincial health office to the provincial paid teachers from various schools, received only 300 pesos as their daily wage, it stressed. It noted, the additional compensation could have helped them support their daily needs and expenses. Further, an increase in their wages will also promote an increase in these personnel's morale. It recommended that the local chief executive direct all officials concerned to streamline the payroll-related process by addressing any problems in the procedure to reduce delays. It also asked them to comply with the mandated daily minimum wage at rates prescribed by the regional tripartite wages and productivity boards in contracts of service in the future. Approximately 30 city government personnel assigned to the Bacolod Traffic Authority Office have been dismissed from their positions due to alleged corrupt activities while performing their duties. Patrick Laxon, head of BTAO, said that since he assumed the post in November of the previous year, 30 job order casual employees have been removed. Additionally, some regular employees were allegedly involved in illegal activities. However, they will be reassigned to the Public Order and Safety Office due to their status as regular government employees. There was a violation, so they were transferred to POSO and have also been assessed by POSO head Primati Votabujara, said Laxon. He further said BTAO observes the one-strike policy against illegal activities involving its personnel to discourage corruption. The head of BTAO issued an unnumbered memorandum dated 16 April, addressed to all BTAO personnel. All personnel caught engaging in illegal activities will be summarily terminated and face legal charges from the city legal office. 
but Laxon also noted that there was a consensus that termination should not be the only consequence for those caught in illegal activities. Additional repercussions should be implemented, including filing charges, he added. The office of the Ombudsman has ordered the dismissal of National Director Demosthenes R. Escoto of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources for grave misconduct over the purchases of transmitters and transceivers in 2018. The penalty of dismissal also carries with it the cancellation of eligibility, forfeiture of retirement benefits, and perpetual disqualification to hold public office. The administrative charge against former Department of Agriculture Assistant Secretary Hansel Odadulo has been dismissed for insufficiency of evidence. BFAR is under the DA the purchases of transmitters and transceivers, which were subjects of Escoto's administrative charges, were intended for the BFAR's Integrated Marine Environment Monitoring System Project Phase 2, Philo Project, which was supposed to enhance the government's capability to safeguard and monitor the country's marine resources and to combat illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing activities. The French government granted a loan to the Philippine government amounting to €28,520,000 on the 18th of December, 2015 payable in 30 years with an interest rate of 0.115% per annum in order to finance the Philo project. The condition of the loan was that the source of the products to be purchased for the Philo project must originate from French suppliers. Two companies participated in the bidding for the transmitters and transceivers. Collect Localization Satellites and SRT France, a subsidiary company of SRT United Kingdom Incorporated in France. After checking the bids, the former was disqualified and the latter was declared the winner of the contract. However, when the French embassy in the Philippines checked, it declared that SRT France was unqualified under the terms of its loan since SRT France has no manufacturing or engineering facilities in France. It also has no record of activities in France, and its parent company is incorporated and domiciled in the UK. The BFAR then sought to increase the project cost from 1.675 billion pesos to 2,097 billion pesos and to close the French loan. It also sought to change the funding source from foreign assistance to local funding, which was later approved by the National Economic Development Authority Investment Coordination Committee. The Department of Budget and Management then allotted 2 billion and 97 million 819,000 pesos for the Philo project as requested, and the final procurement for the transceivers took place on 30 October, 2018. Around 5,000 transceivers were purchased for commercial catcher vessels above 30 gross tons and satellite services subscription during the entire duration of the project. Since the contract was no longer limited to French suppliers, the participants to the bidding were Fleet Automation Services Private Limited, JV Comfac Corporation and SRT UK since Fleet Automation was found wanting in qualification, SRT UK was awarded the contract. However, the Commission on Audit issued a notice of suspension on 24 January, 2020 claiming that a portion of the money paid to SRT UK worth 722.639 million pesos was not supported with complete documents, and that there was failure to pay the appropriate withholding tax. Escoto and Dilo were then slapped with administrative charges for accepting the bid of SRT UK and causing the loss of the French loan. They were also accused of failing to account for the 722.639 million pesos and for adopting a project that is not sustainable. For the Ombudsman, SRT France was indeed not qualified to participate in the bidding. It added that an anomalous scheme was adopted by the respondent, Escoto, to cause the award of the contract to SRT UK, even though it was disadvantageous to the government. The Ombudsman said that their suspicions were raised at the outset that SRT UK was really the bidder for the transceivers, and SRT France was only used to satisfy the French-related conditions of the loan. Despite knowledge of the French-related conditions, the newly created French company, and with no proof of activities in France, made use of the documents pertaining to its parent company to justify its eligibility to bid. These documents were found to be acceptable by Escoto, the Ombudsman said. It found that SRT France was created just a month before the bidding, with the sudden termination of the award to SRT France for some baseless reason, as well as the immediate cancellation of the French loan. The Ombudsman said that Escoto paved the way for SRT UK to participate in the new bidding with expanded scope and increased coverage. The Ombudsman added that Escoto gave unwarranted benefit to SRT France by allowing the company to participate in the bid despite its ineligibility, and his actions constitutes a willful violation of the law and established rule. His actions as chairman of the Bids and Awards Committee culminated in the award of a very favorable contract to SRT UK in this contract. 
the government was made to assume a contractual obligation way beyond what was asked for. As mentioned, instead of purchasing merely 3,736 units of VMS transceivers, he agreed to compel the government to procure 5,000 units of these items. This is a contractual obligation that is grossly disadvantageous to the government and unreasonably beneficial to SRT UK, it ruled. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.